Hey, Bunsen, how do you explain to someone that ice isn't a liquid? You just give them some solid facts. Time for Science Tomorrow with Beaker and Bunsen. Hi everyone and welcome to Science Tomorrow. I'm Bunsen. And I'm Beaker. And today we're going to learn all about the states of matter. States of matter? I've never heard of that before. That's what I'm here for. Okay Bunsen, get to the point. What are the states of matter? Well, there are three main types. Solids, liquids, and gases. What's the difference between them? Well, check out the table. You see this block? Yeah, I do. Why do we have a block there? Tap on the block beaker, but don't tap too hard. Oh, that kind of hurt. Precisely. This block right here is considered a solid. Our first state of matter, solids, are hard and compact, just like this block. Solids have a defined shape, and the molecules, or small pieces of matter that compose solids and other materials, are close together. I see. Yes, Beaker, now you're starting to get it. What are you talking about? You're demonstrating the second state of matter. Huh? Liquids, like the one you just drank, do not have a fixed shape or form. They fit into whatever case or mold they're put into. Our body is composed of mostly liquid, Beaker. 70% of our body is made up of water. You can stick your hand in a liquid and it'll go all around it because the molecules in it are not as close together as solids. Cool, right? Yeah, for sure. Why is this stuff so different from the rest? Well, this Beaker is called gas and it is awesome. Benson, you make gas all the time. Beaker! So do all gases make that sound? Beaker, gases do not have sound. Gases are the state of matter where the molecules, or little substances that make up the gas, are spaced far apart. In gases, the molecules constantly collide with each other. You could even say that on a super tiny level, they are vibrating against each other. So solids are packed close together on the tiny level, liquids are spaced out farther than solids, and gases are super spaced out. Yeah, Beaker, there you go. States of matter can also change, for example. Solids can turn into liquids, like when ice melts into water, and liquids can turn into gases, like when water boils. For this to happen, certain conditions have to be met within an environment. An example of this is freezing and boiling points. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Different temperatures make molecules go faster or slower, resulting in a change in the state of a given object's matter. I see, that's very interesting, Bunsen. Can we blow something up now? Yes, yes we can. How about a little bit of a duel? What kind of duel? You'll see. Now that we're in the warehouse, are you ready for our duel? If you want to lose, then yeah. We'll see about that, Beaker. Um, yes? We're going to make an eruption. How are we going to do that? Well, Beaker, when you drink soda, there are bubbles of a gas called carbon dioxide in it that make it bubbly and fizzy. When you put Mentos in a soda, it causes a massive release of carbon dioxide bubbles, spewing out of the bottle into a geyser-like liquid and gas mixture. So the Mentos, which are solid, are dissolved into the soda. We, Beaker, are going to make a soda geyser. Yes! How in the world did you do that? That's unfair! Don't question my ways. Watch this. That's magnificent! Did I win the duel, Bunsen? You don't look so solid right now. <laughs> yes, you did, Beaker. I don't know how you managed to make that leader appear before I even had one, but I'll get you back later. And now it's time to take a little look at the history behind the science. Beaker, 
It's time to talk about non-Newtonian fluids. So not only are you going to lose to me, but now you're going to make up words too? No, Beaker, let me explain. A guy named Isaac Newton, who you might know for his namesake laws of planetary motion, once observed that all gases and liquids that have a definite volume but not a defined shape always move a certain way. There are some fluids, however, that do not obey Newton's laws, and these are called non-Newtonian fluids. This is oobleck, and it is composed of cornstarch and water. Watch what happens when I punch it. But when I pick it up, it turns back into a liquid. How did it flow through your hands like that? If I tell you, will you stop making random things appear? I guess so. All right, then when you punch oobleck, the molecules are compacted together and act like a solid. But when no pressure is applied, it turns back into its liquid form. Hmm, I have an idea. What do you have up your sleeve? Uh, Beaker, not again. There won't be a soda geyser this time, Bunsen. It will be okay. Whatever you say. What did you have in mind, though? Instead of a soda geyser, I have five soda geysers. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, why don't you let me handle it this time? What are you thinking? If I walk on water, will you stop trying to prank me? Don't be silly, Bunsen. You can't do that. We shall see. Science tomorrow with Beaker and Bunsen. Beaker? Remember how we talked about how non-Newtonian fluids can behave as different states of matter under certain conditions? Yes, of course, Bunsen. So, in theory, if I walk fast enough across this pool of oobleck, the molecules will rapidly be compacted and I won't sink to the bottom. Yeah, we'll see about that. Watch and learn. Bunsen, what kind of magic did you just do? That's impossible. No, Beaker. You just observed the mechanics of non-Newtonian fluids, which are the exception to normal states of matter. I guess no more pranks, then. You agreed to the terms. I guess I did. But can we do some more stuff with this oobleck while we have it here? I suppose so. Let's take it to the skies. I'm up in the sky now to do some more science. And this time, we're gonna drop three objects of different weight and see how they react to the oobleck. If what we know about non-Newtonian fluids is true, the oobleck should absorb the shock of the impact at first. We have Beaker down below giving us play-by-play -play of what happens. First up, we have a basketball. Here we go, ready Beaker? Wow, the impact was absorbed. Crazy, right? Now we have our second object, a 25 pound dumbbell. Here we go. That was a little different, but still really cool. It really was. You ready for the last object? All right, we have number three, a cinder block that weighs more than all the rest of them. You ready? That impact was the biggest set, but not as big as this. You kind of caught me off guard with that explosion. But what did you think about dropping all those items in that oobleck beaker? That was so cool. It really was. You noticed that whenever we dropped an object, it would make an impact hole and then sink to the bottom, right? Of course, Bunsen. This is a unique property of non-Newtonian fluids. This is just like quicksand, another non-Newtonian fluid, because it has different properties under certain circumstances. It acts compacted like a brick at the beginning when it is hit hard, but it is like the water when the molecules in it are not being compressed. 
so, so, so cool. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us today for Science Tomorrow. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, folks. Science Tomorrow with Beaker and Munson.